Justice League issue number 32. Uh, this is Bats Out of Hell Part 2. So Bats Out of Hell Part 1 was The Flash issue number 33, which I did a review on. I like the I like the issue. I just didn't like the fact that it was uh, a numbered Flash issue. Yeah, I I enjoy Bats Out of Hell so far. I mean, it's only two issues in, but so far so good. Pretty much anything that's Dark Metal's tie-in is really good. Dark Knight's metal tie-in. It's really good, um, except for Merciless. Merciless was terrible. <laughs> Merciless was boring. But yeah, uh, we start off with a narrative from Cyborg, and he's just kind of talking about his past, about how he used to be a football star in high school and college, and those dreams got ruined because of an accident that turned him into Cyborg. And we cut to the Flash, who is fighting. Well, not fighting. He's actually running away from uh, the Red Menace. And okay, here's just one little nitpick. I really don't care about this issue. I do not like Red Menace's dialogue bubble. It's like red background, black font, but there's like a white shadow. But the white shadow behind the font is off, so it makes it kind of hard to read. I'm not gonna. Um, usually, I erase the dialogue for uh my videos i will be doing that except for just this one panel just so i can show you how the dialogue actually looks i mean the dialogue itself is good it's just i hate that font it just i mean i can read it but it's kind of an eyesore like i can't i can't just you know read it easily as i can everything else it's just one of those where like, i have to really pay attention to what the hell i'm reading and i just i don't care for it but that's just one little nitpick the issue's pretty good uh I like how everyone, all the Justice League members have kind of their own theme when it comes to um, the creative Batcave that they're fighting in. Like Flashes, he assumes it's quicksand, but it's actually an uh, an hourglass. And it's because um, in Red Menace's world, that version of the Flash was always rushing through things. Like there's never any time to connect with people. Um, that... Batman actually says that, uh, you know, I can never connect with you on a case or on a mission. Uh, even in our final fight, I beat you before we both even knew what happened, which is actually kind of true. Uh, and then, and then we get this cool thing where it's almost like Mad Max, where Red Menace has like this souped up car that uh, he's going to use to run over the Flash. And the Flash is kind of like, uh, you know, I can outrun any car that you build. And... The Red Menace is like, yeah, but it's not just one car that I built. And then a whole bunch of other cars arrive. <laughs> and I kind of like this one on the right. Just because of the fact that it's just like a giant mallet <laughs> attached to the top. I guess it's so crazy. Like, what's it going to do? Is it going to just drive at the Flash and uh, smash him? Like, it, it, it just, that seems like a very, like, Harley thing to do to a car just attach a giant mallet on top i don't know i found that kind of hilarious like everything's supposed to be serious and then you just see a car with a giant mallet on top <laughs> top of the roof i don't know i just thought that was that was funny then we cut to uh aquaman and i really like his bat cave just because of the whole like underwater ship graveyard i don't know i like that the whole kind of gives it like a pirate feel and uh if you can tell by my name i I enjoy the pirates. So, um, the Drowned, who is my favorite character of these Dark Metal Knights. I really, really, or Dark Knights Metal. I really like her character. I want to see more of her. Um, but she comes in riding this giant monster. And Aquaman starts fighting and slashing at it. And then, uh, he tries to get the creature under his heel. Uh, well, basically, he, he he tries to get he tries to get the creature to listen to him, um, but the drown informs him, and this is like the kind of cool twist. Like she, she informs him that like, you know uh, she won't respond to your aqua therapy. Um, she th she thinks my way now, and then Aquaman's like who, and I love this little twist. Um, the drown's like, don't you recognize your love? Yeah, don't you recognize Mira? That monster is Mira. So Aquaman has been fighting Mira this whole time without realizing it. And it's like, oh man, what an effed up thing to do. <laughs> Turn someone's lover into a monster and then have them fight it. 
Good thing Aquaman didn't fight it to the death. Like, that's one thing I'm surprised. Like, if the Drown really wanted to mess with Aquaman, the Drown wouldn't have said anything until Aquaman fought that creature and maybe killed it or, like, like blinded it or something. Like, just do something like some, um, some kind of permanent damage. And then reveal, hey, you know this creature that you've been fighting? Guess what? It's your lover, Mira. Like, that would have been, like, a really cruel thing to do. But to kind of tear Aquaman straight up, eh, because now he, he knows not to do any, like, lethal or permanent damage to the monster. Then again, it does make the fight easier for the Drown, because uh, Aquaman's not going to be going all in on the monster, because he doesn't want to hurt his lover. But yeah, just something that I, uh, I was thinking of. What does it say about me that I'm thinking about, like, cruel things that you can do to these characters? <laughs> But yeah, I wouldn't have, uh, if I was a drone, I wouldn't have said anything until Aquaman did some kind of, either killed it or did some kind of permanent damage. And then I would have uh, revealed who it was. Because then that would have really destroyed him. And then we cut to Wonder Woman. And she's fighting the uh, Merciless, who uh, I, I hated his origin story. Well, I like the fact that he, no, actually no. I was going to say something else, but that's actually another character. That's not Merciless that I, that I was thinking of. Yeah, here's another thing. It's just um, in Merciless's world, him and Wonder Woman were lovers. And yet he has no, seems like he has no problem whatsoever trying to kill this version. And it just seems kind of weird to me because this version of Wonder Woman is pretty much, I would, I would assume she's kind of the same character wise. Because all the other heroes, outside of Batman, all the other heroes are the same. Like Barry in canon verse is the same as barry in the dark verse same with uh no not not same for aquaman because aquaman was a woman in uh in that verse but like everybody else is kind of cyborg was pretty much the same so i'm assuming that wonder woman is the same which kind of begs the question of why you have no problem trying to kill your lover it's like yeah it's a different version well not even a different version i mean it's a different it's a different universe, but it's still the same. It's the same woman you love. So, I don't know. That was, was kind of weird. But um, there is one thing that he does that's kind of cool. I will give him this. Is that he killed all of Wonder Woman's sisters, like her Amazonian sisters. And then, since he's a god of war, he ordered the, the ferryman at the River Styx to collect all the coins from all the dead Amazons. That way, sh they can't move on to the next life what he did instead was he took all the coins and then he melted it basically into like a giant gong and he smashes it and then out of the gong all the spirits of her amazonian sisters come out and he's gonna he sets some at wonder woman to attack her and i thought oh okay that now that was cool that's that is a really messed up thing to do <laughs> Kill all these people, prevent them from going into the afterlife, and then using their restless souls to attack their fellow sister. Now that that was cool. I'll give I'll give props to that. Like this issue actually does a better version of the merciless than uh than his one shot does. Cause I found like I said, I found his one shot just, just really boring. All all of this we get um a voiceover from Cyborg. And he's kind of just saying how like everybody, all the Justice League members, like they're in peril and they need his help. Um, and then he kind of says like, the only problem is I can't help my team because the Dark Knights have a secret weapon to use against them. It's me. And then the final page is Cyborg. Man, this is such a disturbing image the longer you look at it. Especially when you look at it, like what happened to his left arm. It's just kind of like melting away yeah <laughs> so yeah that's bats out of hell part two next follow the story to hal jordan okay so hal jordan next hal jordan is going to be part three so there goes uh hal jordan the green lantern core issue that i can uh well i mean i'm gonna get it anyway it's just because i like the bats out of hell story but um if i didn't i would be skipping that issue because yeah, I don't know. I, I don't like this numbering system. I don't like the fact that... I like the story. I like the Bats Out of Hell. I don't like the fact that it's Flash number 33. It's Justice League number 32. It's Hal Jordan number 32. Because the people who don't like Dark Metal, they have to wait like a month. Or if it's bi-monthly, they have to wait two weeks. Well, no, actually, they have to wait for another month now. Um, 
but yeah, like, okay, say say all you want to do is you just want to read Hal Jordan and the Green Lantern Corps. You don't want to read Dark Knight's Metal. Well, now you have to wait a whole another month. Is it a month or is it bi-monthly? Oh, I think it's bi-monthly. Okay, but that means that now you have to wait. Hey, you have to wait a month between issues because, uh, you know, you waited two weeks and then it's just it's a Dark Knight's Metal tie-in. You don't want that. So you, now you have to wait another two weeks. So you have to wait a month before you can get your next issue of Hal Jordan and the Green Lantern Corps. For um, monthly issues, now you got to wait two months. And it's just like, I don't know. I just, I don't like the summary system. I wish they would have just done a mini series. It's called, you know, Dark Metal, Dark Knight's Metal, Bat Out of Hell. Or just call it Bat Out of Hell. And that's it. You know, and have it be its own, like, little mini series. I just, I don't like the fact that it's, it's taking over, like, numbered issues for other series. But that's just a little nitpick. Other than that, freaking loving this series so far like everything that has to do with dark knight's metal has been really really great at the moment like i said only drawback is merciless now that was it but everything else has been like awesome so yeah i hope you guys enjoy this video and i'll catch you guys all next time later